And we are now on page nine. And I want to show you general preferences and how to set those up. So I am using, as I mentioned, Photoshop Creative Cloud. I'm using the latest version. I automatically just update whenever something new comes out. First thing we want to do is we want to go to our general preferences. Oh, and I am on a Mac, just so you know. So if it doesn't look familiar across the top here, that's that's probably why. So to open your general preferences, you can see the methods, uh, where to find uh, on the notes, where to find minute. Now I'm going to go to what it says for a Mac, Photoshop preferences. And for now, I'm just going to click general at the top. You can see when I go to this menu, there's a whole bunch of different options. Just go to general because all of these ones are listed to the left side in the general preferences screen like we see here. You should leave all of the settings in your general preferences at the default settings until you gain more experience with Photoshop, except for the four shown below. These may not make sense right now, but they will as we further explore Photoshop. First thing we want to do is click the Tools tab on the left-hand side. And I'm just taking these in order. And I'll click on the Tools, and you can see a different set of preferences comes up. The first thing you want to do is make sure that Zoom resizes Windows. Let me unclick this, and I'll come back and show you why. Now, if I enlarge, and by the way, these are three. These are not of the notes necessarily, but it's one of the. These are three of those ten essential speed keys: Command plus, Command minus, and Command zero, or Control plus, minus, and zero if you're in a PC. So if I go com Command plus, you see how the it enlarges, but the frame itself doesn't change the size. And the same if I zoom in, the document window stays anchored and the image will reduce and enlarge regardless. If I instead, let me go back to preferences. And I'm just going to go straight to tools right here. If instead I hit zoom resizes windows, now when I enlarge and, and zoom in and out, the image stays the exact same size as the document window. So that's the first thing I would also do. The second is while you're still in the Tools tab, let me go back to that, and I'll go to Tools right here. While you're in the Tools tab, check Show Tool Tips, and it's right here. And all that is, in fact, I can show it by using this. If I hold my mouse over something, like I just, whatever this vector tools, whatever it tells me what it is, or over here, zoom resizes window, determines whether document windows resize when zooming, so on and so forth. So you want to make sure the show tool tips is on because it really, really makes a big difference. I still use them. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Now you're going to go to the history log tab. Here it is right here. And check on history log, which is already checked. Then choose metadata and detailed. Why do I do that? Because if I have an image, let's, let me give you an idea here. I'm going to close this temporarily, and I'm going to just uh, create a levels adjustment layer. It doesn't make any difference what it is. I just want to show you. Now I can go to the File menu, File Info, and then choose Photoshop. It, it's got all sorts of nonsense, but choose Photoshop. And there is a a it's a history log you may not be able to understand a lot of it but if you send me an image that you want to know what's going on if you have this set then i can look through your history log and figure out what it is you've done that's different than the history panel and the history panel over here on the right after you're done with it and we're going to talk about this in a bit after you're done with it and you close that image it erases all this history so the history log will still tell us what it is that has happened to your image. So I'd encourage you to do that. And last, on under general preferences, I'm going to go back to preferences, and I'm going to choose workspace and uncheck open documents and tab. I can't. I think this is the, the silliest function, but this is just me. If you don't uncheck that, every time you open it, it ends up like this, where it's tabbed across the top. And I don't want that because now I can't see all of my image. So I don't like it when it automatically opens as a tab. So that's why I did that, where I workspace and uncheck open documents as tabs. One other thing while we're in here, if you go to the interface tab, and this is at the bottom of page nine, Photoshop interface color themes. When you go to this, you're given a choice of 
uh, up here. There's a lot of stuff in here, but these are the ones that you really need to worry about. You see how everything is dark? I'm sorry, I can't stand that. I find it depressing. And I think that's the way it comes. Uh, and I know Lightroom, it's the only way it comes. The develop module to me is too dark and too cluttered compared to Adobe Camera Raw plugin. And they are the same functions, whether you're using it, uh, the Adobe Camera Raw plugin, which we'll talk about in class three, or uh, develop module to accomplish. I recommend you do uh, use ACR, but uh, read through those three blog posts on Lightroom versus Photoshop and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So this is the color theme that I prefer. This one's too light and this one's just about right. It, it approaches a 50% gray, at least on the background, and that's just kind of the way I like it. 